going into Matthew Underwood today, I guess this is an enabler episode. Some days we have alleged predators. Other days we are showcasing enablers. The first email I read, which was literally a novel. He starts it with like, howdy, sorry, I write novels. Dude, Matt, you weren't kidding. <laughs> that was the most honest subject title I've ever seen in an email, to be quite honest with you. It was long. I don't even know how long it took me. I think it was like two hours to go through that email where he defends Dan Schneider and his actions and really discredits the survivors that, you know, like myself, that have come forward. He just totally discredits me. I'm used to this at this point when it comes to the Nick stars, my Nick peers, et cetera. I'm really, really, really used to it. So this was like in 2021. And ironically, this was before the Business Insider expose when it came to Dan Schneider's allegations, people that have come forward, lawsuit, NDAs, whatever, et cetera. He really should have waited. And if he was going to say something, it should be like, I don't know. You know, I honestly just don't know. And I've only had my own personal experience with Dan and whatever it was. But what I found interesting about his first email was that he tried to tell this fan that there was no inappropriate behavior, content, et cetera, on Zoe 101. Someone shared with me this TikTok video that I wasn't on this season. This was the season after I left, I think. And so let's just watch this for a second because I really want to remind, you know, not only the audience out there, but Matthew Underwood in particular, that, yo, what, what is, is this not inappropriate? Let's watch it. Zoe, yo, crash. Crash. <laughs> oh, 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 all right. That's very nice, nice Quinn. A plus. <laughs> or D plus. <laughs> Not only is Aaron Sanders, who played Quinn, I think a child here, but like my friend Adam mentioned earlier, is that this is content created for children. Children. Some might be five years old. It is wild because Matt Underwood was there. And in the first email, he really wants to discredit any type of inappropriate content, et cetera, when it came to Nickelodeon and Dan Schneider. He says there was no such thing. And then Chris Massey, who plays Michael's comment at the end, is even more disturbing. So now going into the second email from Matt Underwood. This one's interesting because it's a little bit of a different tune. I guess it's lots of love. I don't know who started this subject, if it was Matt Underwood or if it was the fan of Matt Underwood. First and foremost, you should know I never doubted your intentions for a second. This is the reason I don't send emails to anyone else about this subject. Why are you emailing this person? What is the deal here? I know you're not only good-hearted, but you are a reasonable individual who is motivated to do the right thing. Gives me a little bit of the pat on the head, kind of manipulative tactic to do a backhanded compliment almost, like, I know you're better than this, so be better than this in the way that I want you to be better than this because I have my own intention. If I had thought otherwise, I would not have taken even a second to give you my thoughts on the matter. I don't need commending for spending the time to talk to you about it. I must commend you for having such a strong will that you can reasonably take in what I said and make your own logical, I love when men say this, logical, judgment calls. That is extraordinarily brave. You should know there are millions of people in this country that are literally capable, incapable of doing that. They are Q. So obviously Matt Underwood in the first email, if you guys remember, has this whole thing with Q. I don't know. He's very, very focused on, on QAnon. And, you know, I don't know if anyone saw the documentary on HBO Max, but they did a whole documentary on Q and actually found, found out who it was. And it was the, the head of 4chan long story and he's in my opinion using Q as a way to encourage slash manipulate this fan into not creating any more content that is not in Dan Schneider's favor and so mentioning Q insinuating that any content about Dan Schneider is Q makes someone feel I mean even me I'd be like I don't want to be necessarily Q. You know, I don't really want to give into QAnon theory per se because the true stories are so much more relevant. 
Second, I have many reasons to believe Dan's side of things. I haven't heard Dan's side of things, and I haven't heard anyone else personally who has heard Dan Schneider's side of things. He's been under a, a rock, but I find this very interesting because Matt Underwood is allegedly insinuating that he had a conversation with Dan Schneider about the allegations. He doesn't really say exactly what Dan Schneider had to say, but he lets us know that Dan Schneider did say something. So he did have a conversation with Matthew Underwood, and this is why I'm very suspicious about this email. I get that it's coming from allegedly Matt Underwood's Gmail. I get that Matt Underwood is the one probably writing this, but it feels like Dan Schneider is almost writing this email. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna say it. But my main intent is always to encourage thorough research and personal inquiries while considering allegations or theories that might not be true. I want to be clear that I was providing my outlook on things, but if you desire to continue, there are great ways to do it that are responsible and ethical. Journalists have the same job Sloan does. He's really watching Sloan videos. <laughs> Sloan really trailblazed a lot of the uh, investigative work when it came to Dan Schneider. So um, I give mad props to Sloan. Honestly, Sloan really helped. So journalists have the same job Sloan does. They just have to jump through more hoops to get the real truth and won't publish unless they do. To be frank, I still don't discount any allegations. Okay. Okay, so now he's kind of doing that whole I play both sides, like... <laughs> I'm over here and I'm a little bit over here, but I think it's because what ended up happening in the email before I got to see what this individual said to him before is she wiped her Instagram profile about Dan Schneider. His emails were that persuasive that it made her feel as though that she was doing something wrong. And now fast forward, look, Business Insider, this big publication, well-known journalist, got the spotlight. And honestly, it really stemmed from people like Sloan. And here he is discouraging this girl's intuitive feeling about Nickelodeon, Dan Schneider, et cetera. So I find this very problematic. This is why enablers suck. You bury the truth. You think you're helping someone, but really you're doing the opposite. You're helping no one. To be frank, I still don't discount any allegations. I couldn't because I have no physical proof. I can provide the logical reasonings behind my thought processes that lead me to believe Dan. But I cannot and would not outright discount allegations without literal proof. Yo, Matt! Can we go? Let me hear. Where were we? Where is it? Um, here we go. Can we watch this one more time? Zoe, yo, crash. Crash. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. All right. That's great. Very nice, nice Quinn. That's A plus. <laughs> or D plus. <laughs> There's one piece of proof. Moving on. I have the same information to base my judgments off as you, with the addition of personal experiences with the guy. But my personal experiences with him aren't even much to me. The real holes in the stories come when I consider the amount of people on set and our social workers. I don't even remember social workers. Every time a child's actor is asked to do something that could in the slightest make them uncomfortable, they're asked if they're okay with it. Not true. No one asked me before I made comments about my chest area. No one asked me if I was okay with saying that line. No one. Who are you talking about? Okay, they're asked if, you know, they're okay with it by a social worker ahead of time. They don't have to tell production no. My social worker has played the bad guy for me plenty of times. God, I wish the social worker was around when I was around. Saying no to a request they know I wouldn't want to say no to, but I don't want to say yes to either. It would be extensively hard to put a child in an uncomfortable situation on set. I'm sorry. Can I read this one more time? It would be extensively hard to put a child in an uncomfortable situation on set. Now, I feel that the clothes for our commercial should be really cool, like funky. I'm down with funky. Okay, so I sketched out a few possible outfit combinations. See? Cool. But how do we buy these clothes? Huh? 
How do we buy these boobs? Yeah, I went a little overboard on those. Extensively hard, Matthew Underwood. It was so hard that it aired. All right, so I learned when studying logic. <laughs> Now, this is really sounding more like Logan older than I thought. By the way, just remember that the fan that is speaking to him here is, I don't know if she's a woman, young woman, girl, female nonetheless, identifies as a female. Doing something inappropriate on Nickelodeon set is extraordinarily difficult. From personal experience, so to prove to me that something inappropriate was done there, Matthew, dude, you were there. How do you not remember that you were there? I need evidence to account for how the accused could get past all the extraordinary checks and balances to get away with it. If I hear an explanation for the actions that sounds more reasonable and likely, that's probably the correct explanation. I want to touch on your personal situation too. I don't want to get personal about it. I myself can feel triggered when talking about it. I want you to know I feel for you. The world can be a savage place. <laughs> with a lot of unreasonable people like you're unreasonable it's quite sad how often individuals can get away with discussing acts in everyday life i must add here that sadly when <laughs> when in the spotlight of hollywood sets these situations are always taken much more seriously i wish the world outside of la took the situations just as seriously no matt hollywood didn't take any of this seriously honestly until after the me too movement it's still not being taken seriously. Hollywood is not a safe space. And here he is once again mansplaining to this fan, making her feel silly about questioning or looking into Hollywood, looking into Nickelodeon, looking into Dan. I don't know exactly what to think about what Jamie told you. I'm uncomfortable being told someone is a creep without being... It, it, is he talking about Jamie Lynn Spears here? There is no way. It leads me to believe they're either also riding the rumor wagon. Here we go with Christy Carlson Romano and the enabler. See how all enablers speak the same way? They all use it's a, a, a rumor, you know, this person's a liar, this person is a psycho, this person is crazy, this person doesn't know, this person's outside of Hollywood, you know, whatever it is. It's all to protect the bad guys. They don't even know they're protecting the bad guy because they think they're protecting their career. But you have to understand the reason why they're trying to protect their career is because the ones who control their career are the bad guys. And that's why the institutions, when I showed you the five layers yesterday, is so important because people are willing to protect their bank accounts more than they are to protect children or human life. The institutions are protected by every single thing below them. It's a trickle-down effect, but it also is a trickle-up effect because what's happening down below is protecting what the institution is covering up. There is one reason that I found that seems to give people the impression that he's creepy, though. It's quite comical. Sorry, I don't even, I'm not usually that kind of person, but, like, I'm kind of pissed that you would even think about saying that it's ki quite comical. The obvious creepy behavior by Dan Schneider and Nickelodeon. This is embarrassing. You were there. But I hear it enough to assume it's got to be the culprit to the rumors. That is, he keeps working with kids. No, that's not it, Matt. It's not that he just keeps working with kids. It's that his content is creepy. His content is wrong. Ariana Grande, the, the bed thing, I will never, I don't want to play it here because I don't even want to perpetuate how gross it is. When I found it on YouTube and I clicked on it, it literally told me like, you have to be 18 years or older to watch this. This was a Nickelodeon. It's how many tweets there are about feet, kids' feet in general. There's so much there. As stupid as that might sound, a lot of people find it weird that a grown man would want to work with kids for decades. Not the slightest bit weird if a woman wants to work with kids her whole life. But when a man finds it rewarding and fun, he's got to be a creep. No, no, no. It's all about the content. Look at Colleen Ballinger. <laughs> it's not about the gender. I mean, you know, for sure there's, I'm sure people speculate males more so. But look at Colleen Ballinger, for example. She's a female, she was creating child content, and then she was doing X, Y, and Z. And yeah, sure, maybe people were more trusting with her because she was a female. I don't really think so, though. 
Okay, so what is it? Woman wants to work with kids whole life, but when a man finds it rewarding and fun, he's got to be a creep. Apparently, I... Apparently, I don't believe that because I fully understand how rewarding it can be to see children learn new things, something adults don't do very often. To see kids grow from a newbie to a pro, and especially the pure joy and fun that kids bring to the table, something most adults have lost along the way. Sure, I learn a lot from my children. I completely understand why he'd want to work with kids. It's hella fun. Okay. It's hella fun. Is this Dan? <laughs> I still think this is Dan Schneider. Sadly, though, so many times I've heard someone say, why would he want to work closely with kids his whole life? That's creepy. But if he didn't have a pee, whoa. Okay, I don't know why you're going right into that. You can just say, but if he wasn't a man. It's like. Whoa, I just wasn't expecting that. It just kind of threw me off guard. Um, how old is the girl you're talking to, by the way? That would be totally acceptable, and the creepiness would not be there. It's stuff like that that forced me to take a step back when people make allegations, because I have to consider if they're just making a stupid, stupid judgment call, like above, or writing a rumor wagon, or simply reaching for attention. Oh, yeah. Or really reaching for attention when it takes me one second on TikTok to find the Quinn episode. I really hope you don't remove your Insta page over this. She already did. I see you've removed everything, but you cannot feel like you have to punish yourself for wanting to help people. Some people may give you shit about it, but those people need to grow the f up. You need to grow the f up, Matt. The email before you were discrediting the survivors, and then now here you're, you're basically saying that you have no idea what's creepy about Dan Schneider when you were there physically filming with the rest of us. I know the cast adores you. Me? I'm sorry, I was like, are you speaking for me now? Wait, what cast? Who who adores you? Who what's going on here? <laughs> See, it's kind of like fandom creepy, like when someone has like the power position and they want to like, you know, make the person feel like, oh, the 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 cast loves you. Like I know the cast, and so I'm giving you a message from the cast. It's kind of weird and creepy. I mean, I think she sounds like a very cool individual, honestly, that she was investigating Dan Schneider. I do. Okay, so I know the cast adores you and the ones that are actually cool will understand your intentions. Wait, and the ones that are actually cool? Here we are again putting the hierarchy. What is up with this? Why does one um, Nick star have to be cooler than the other? This is a pattern I keep seeing from all of my peers. Stop it. This is what's wrong with the world. Who's more popular? Who actually matters? This person's cool. This person's not cool. Like, God, really, man? So, okay, if they don't, then they're more concerned about themselves than anything else, and they're not worth your care. Matt, you're more concerned about yourself here. You're trying to get into the Zoe 102 reboot. If any of them gets upset and you stop spreading information, they themselves won't spread. I think that should tell you something about them. Is he talking about Jamie? No matter what you decide to do, I know that I'll be around to talk and I'll always be a friend. Woo! Okay, the last email that he made before this, he said that if anyone got around to reading the end of it, that they would be his hero. Am I your hero now? Am I cool enough for you? You took a lot of time to write those emails, and I really wonder what your intention was there. Because now fast forward to the Business Insider article where multiple people spoke about Dan Schneider in not a good way. Why I find these emails problematic the most is because Matt Underwood has never come forward and said, I support the survivors and the individuals that have come forward against Dan Schneider. And you can see here in the email that he was like, if I saw literal proof or if journalists did their journalist jobs and investigation, et cetera, that then he would be more open to it. Well, we're in what? Year 2023, almost 2024. And Matt Underwood has not said a thing about the Business Insider article, expose that came forward. He never said anything, I don't think, when it came to, I'm not sure, maybe someone can send it to me, when it comes to Jeanette McCurdy's book. He never said anything about my personal protest where I shared my story, my trauma, working on a Nick set with Dan Schneider. And the list honestly goes on. He tried to act like he was this very logical person here and very neutral-ish, even though he was more obviously leaning on Dan's side, 
of things, which I'm very curious. So is this what Dan's side of things are that he thinks kids are just hella fun? That's another thing. He even like having female writers on his Nickelodeon shows. And Matt, don't you remember that, that all of the kids writers, for example, were males? And it really makes sense when you think about, I'm sorry, but the girls were truly exploited the most. Was Dan really influencing these individuals to create content like that? Or were they also like Dan? And that just gives me the... And so, you know, that's what we got here today when it comes to enablers. And it's really interesting that these enablers tend to use the same language. Like, the language was rumors. Stop using the word rumors when it comes to when survivors tell you their story. It would be really nice to go into a future where survivors' truth are not being told as if they are rumors, gossip, drama. It's not drama, it's trauma. And we need to change this language and we need to just be better human beings and not rank one another who's cooler. What did Christian say? We need to be allies horizontally where we're, we're looking into the same direction and being allies, not vertically, which is what capitalism and so many things want us to be. They want us to just trample on top of one another instead of you know being at one. It creates toxic work environments. It creates toxic behavior. We can do better, that we can be better, and that we can create change. And we can have heart-to-hearts, and we can have conversations with one another, and we can be held accountable, and we can say we're sorry and mean it. And we can want to do better. And that we don't want to hurt people's feelings. That we don't.